What's that one called? I believe that's a woolly bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of it? <laughs> Have you ever heard of that fly, Russ? Well, what's up, everybody? It's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing, back with Five Flies for May. Joined, as always, by Tanner Smith. Hey. And who, who are you? Russell Miller, the Uncle in, Feather Merchants. The infamous Russell Miller. Yes. Happy to be here. Always think exciting. he's up for yes. Russell Miller. So we're going to talk about May fishing. This month, we're going to talk specifically about a little bit more still water stuff. Uh, there are some uh, more moving water questions we're going to answer in the question and answer portion. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk about May fishing. Russ, what do you, when you think May fishing, what do you, what do you get most excited about? Oh, man. Uh, warm weather. You better yeah. say still waters. Lakes, baby. Yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I like lakes a lot. <laughs> yeah. I like lakes Big lake guy. Big lake guy. Big fish guy. Yeah. Oh. Kind of like uh, you can get a lot of fish, too. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of reasons to like lakes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us have been fishing rivers all winter. We've been waiting for yeah. the ice to come back. It's true. It's off. Bugs are starting to move around. Huh. It's a good time to be thinking about Think about May. Think about all those uh, all those South Park still waters have iced off and they're open now, which is nice. Yep, yep. There's some options elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the still water game is pretty endless. You know, literally, you can fish any lake. You know, so no shit. Um, people get do get stuck. I think on a few certain spots. Of course, like the Antero Spinney is very good lakes, but gosh, they're all over the place. Every you know, every oh. body of water is going to fish well. You know, no, depending streamers you want to go strip streamers you want to find some different types of species even like lake trout you know cutthroat trout all that stuff i mean the options are endless of course i think we all probably favor the plains lakes type things the most because like yes big fish lots of fish pretty settings that sort of thing but yeah i mean that's gosh there's all kinds of stuff you can do at lakes yeah yeah you just enjoy the wind too yeah <laughs> yeah love wind that's <laughs> yes especially this spring it's been windy. It's been a windy spring. It's been a little windy. I was watching the local news and they said it's the windiest spring since uh, April uh, 1989. I was about to say it was so, going to be like 1930. Yeah. Like during the, the, what was the Great Depression? It's like, it's like That's the Great Depression, 1930? Dust, the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl, yeah. It's like two miles per hour on average every day higher than it's like really every I believe so. it. That's not that bad actually. Russ and I have been trying to schedule um, a little reading water session for uh, spring dry flies and... Uh, to say that we have rescheduled multiple times would be an understatement. It's been a it's been a bit of a grind. It's been it's been yeah. tough. But it's hopefully tough. tomorrow we'll be getting out there. That episode will be available next week if everything goes well. If it's not available next week, then things went poorly. So the wind. Yeah, yeah. But it's blame not gonna, it's gonna be great. It's yeah, gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be good. Blame it on the dub. All right, cool. So as always. <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions about June fishing, I believe next month we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, warm water stuff. So if you have any warm water specific questions, drop them mm -hmm. in the comments. If you want to talk uh, regular moving water trout too, also drop those comments down below. Uh, as always, thank you to Umpqua. There's a variety of prize packs you'll get uh, if, you, if your question is selected and rising. So thanks to Russ for all the support over the years. Thank you guys out there for all the support on We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, drop the comments down below. Also, let us know what you think about the new setup. How's the audio sound? If any of you guys think that the audio sounds terrible, feel free to let, leave that down in the comments. I would love to hear that feedback. I've already been shamed about the audio. Yeah. yeah. If Russ doesn't... Look, we, we talked about doing headphones, and uh, <coughs> Tanner doesn't want to do the uniform. Yeah. He doesn't want to wear them. His, his teeth... He thinks his ears are too pretty. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the world needs to see my ears, yeah. you know? Yeah. So we're rocking no headphones. So if the audio goes bad, it's his fault. Yeah. The audio is going to be great, folks. Yeah. Stay tuned the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I bet you can't watch all 54 minutes of this episode. Yeah. If you can. I dare you. Yeah. I dare you to watch all We should have minutes. like a, like a word that's in the last two minutes and have like an additional giveaway. Like for like the people, but maybe it's not in the two no, minutes. No, but you can't do that because then people just fast yeah, forward, man. True. It's a different different era. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> That'd be good though. I mean, we could just hide it <laughs> in the middle of something like like minute thirty four. You know. Yeah. This is the this is the keyword. Yeah. We'll think about that for next episode. It's like Ovaltine from a Christmas Story. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. A little Blue's Clues edition here. Blue's Clues. <laughs> hey, that guy came back, didn't he? I saw him on Instagram. Yeah. He was looking great. <laughs> Good for him. All right, so let's talk flies for May Stillwater edition. Flashy intro. <laughs> The Wayne's World. Yeah. Which one do you want to do first? I don't know. I don't care. I got something to say about everything. Nice. Perfect. Yeah, we could talk about, I think, hopefully we talk about all five of those. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Fly number one uh, is the uh, <clears throat> line. <clears throat> uh, See if you can get it out. It, 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 it stumped me too. Yeah. Woolby bugger? Uh, Warby Parker is close. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, hot head woolly bugger? No woolly mammoth. There yeah. we go. Two Ooh. L's on this one. Yep. Tanner, <clears throat> what do you like about the chartreuse hothead woolly bugger. Gosh, I mean, it sticks out. It's a good color, I think, you know, rides. You can fish it in a variety of ways, right? We always, every episode of Five Flies, variety. We want stuff that's versatile. Um, again, that covers that. You can strip it, you know, if you want to, you know, and mix it on some sink tips, some different, that sort of stuff. You know, fish them drops, fish them shallow coves, that sort of stuff. I mean, it's great for that as well. But also, I mean, you get in some heavy chop. You hang that as like a lead fly. You're going to see a lot of action on it as well that way. So versatility there, great color, classic color. Fish the classics, the most underrated flies, you know. So, um, yeah, that's. Also works in uh, moving water. That's a fun fact. Yeah. you Yeah, you could fish that in a in a river as well. Wow. Versatile. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Versatility. Yeah. Fact. Slow A slow moving river or a fast moving river. Yeah. Russ, <clears throat> what's your favorite way to present a wool, woolly bugger. A woolly bugger. There is no favorite way because there's so many ways. Mm. I, 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 a, lot, a lot of what Tanner said, um, I like the hot bead on it a lot. Do you like talking to the mic? I like the hot bead <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I think one of the best things about the woolly bugger that, uh, that a lot of people don't realize why, why, why it makes it work so well is all that Palmer tackle in there. Right, it pushes a lot of water. Yeah. Those fish had those lateral lines, right? And you know, even if you're fishing a muddier edge, if the wind's coming into the shore, right? Like they're able to feel this fly. You get that little that dark silhouette with that bright flash bead. Um, I, I think that's part of the magic of a good woolly bugger is like it, they feel it coming across, um, and they can seek it out. And you know, I usually fish it in a, in a multiple fly rig a lot of times, right? Yeah. And that might be the one that pulls them in. Right. Um, might be the one that gets eaten, but like, uh, I like, I like having it on the rig for those reasons. I was going to ask in a multi-fly rig, do you tie to tag ends or do you tie in line? I'm a tag man. You're a tag man. I know what the answer is for you. Probably yeah. in line for me, but on that fly, like both through the eye. So it's like Ooh. jiggly Ooh. bouncing on the side. You know? For like so when you're like stripping it or when you're, uh, Either. when you're bouncing it below a bobber. Mostly under a bobber. Yeah. If I'm stripping it, it's probably going to be in line for me. Oh. Just, you know. Why do you, why do you like the tag ends? Um, the one not to retie if you want to change out that fly, right? If that fly's not it, or you want to change an orange bead one or yeah. a pink bead one, like it's one not to tie. Uh, and the other reason I really like it when you're pulling flies, right, is that it's independently um, gives you that feedback of the bite compared to anything else in line of the rig, right? So like they have to move those other flies in order to register it or feel yeah. it. Uh, when it's in line, it's, it's an equal pull regardless yeah. of uh of which fly it is in your rig so your way stinks yeah no 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 yeah. right time and a place uh, that, that that's, that's <laughs> me personally every time every place <laughs> for me it's every time and every place <laughs> right yeah, right keep it simple like yeah. even if, uh, if i'm hanging under an indicator like right. i still do it yeah, on a tag right. i'm just so used to it as part yeah. of the problem well right. It speaks to finding your like finding your right, thing. you like found your thing you know I mean? i'm an old yeah. dog now yeah, yeah. it's official it's, right. right like no new tricks but you got pretty good tricks going right. on, you know? You know, and then a rabbit comes out of the hat. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, nice. There, there it is. There's uh, fly number one, the hot bead woolly bugger. 
That should be in everyone's box, truly. Yeah, like right, it is right. a staple, staple, right. staple. Yeah, right. Whether it's a hot beat or not. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah, in like 12 different colors. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like, well, before we uh, go on, what do you feel like the hothead, like I feel like hothead, hotheads uh, flies like make their way into a lot of still water boxes. Like, what do you think that is? Is it, those fish are generally dumber? I think it's just a, an They're generally more like apt to uh, be brought in by like shiny things. I think all fish can fall for bright shiny things. Like yeah. I think that would work on a river as well. That's why we use like a thing like a psycho prince, you know, and yeah. they're crushing that. I think, yeah, flashy will always attract. It might not be the hottest fly or the most productive. You know, there might be another fly that if you had on, you caught more, but a fish will always fall victim to a hothead yeah. flash of some sort in any situation. So that's why you have to have them. Like if nothing's going right, you will eventually find something on a fly like that. Yeah. For like, sure. I think hot beats pull fish, man. Right. And I find they're either like they smoke fish right. and they're unbelievably right. productive or it's just like, oh, it's like uh, the curse kryptonite on your <laughs> rig and you're like, get this crap off. But like if it's on, That's it's crazy. like it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's silly. Like it's uh, it's ridiculous. And sometimes you'll have like, you know, multiple beat colors you're trying out. They're like, are they on orange today? Or like, yeah. right. Um, and you are always astonished when they're eating it. You're like, you like Bobber goes down. You're like, I wonder what it's on. And they come up and it's like that thing in the corner. You're like, that's unbelievable. You know, yeah. like there might not be a better feeling. Cause you're like, if they're eating this thing today, I am going to pound them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, so. Absolutely. So there's fly number one. Might as well go right into uh, another bugger. This is Pop's bugger. Hey, I, it was if it was my choice, I was going to do five woolly buggers for May. Yeah, I was. I, I said, was, look, I was kind of fighting for that, and I was like, hey, you know, there's a lot of reasons to go with. I mean, woolly bugger, like, right. dude, but buggers. Then we wouldn't be able to put a 54 minute episode out. Can we really do 54 minutes on on woolly buggers? I think we could do 54 minutes on a bugger. Yeah. There's a lot of subtleties to some buggers, right? But maybe maybe in, in the, a future episode we'll plan yeah, that one out in the interest of, uh, of 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 diversity well, yeah, and yeah, inclusion yeah. with a lot of good flies here yeah. we'll just do two yeah. <laughs> pops bugger tanner what do you like about pops bugger gosh a lot of the same things i said gosh. About the other woolly bugger maybe we can't do 54 <laughs> minutes <laughs> no um again flashy hot bead I love stripping flies like that. I think like those, like if I go, if I start stripping, twitching and stuff like that, for me, whatever reason, I always like flashy and bright because yeah. I think like to Russ's point, like you will find fish that like can't leave that thing alone. If it's moving around, like they can't for whatever reason, you know? Um, so I'm going to strip those probably more than I'm going to have them on my like nymph rig. Um, that's a personal preference. It could be totally off, you know, maybe if it's a big chop day, I'll have something like that. When you're stripping it. a fly this size, what kind of, what, like what length, uh, strips are you doing what kind of action are you imparting i'm i'm a quick strip guy so like gosh like one two inch like twitch twitch like it's probably more of a twitch than a yeah. strip but then of course you mix that up right like go fast don't stop like slow down so yeah. but usually just short quick strips for me you know let it sink cast it out let it sink down are you looking for any Works specific kind of water features are you looking for points are you looking for drop-offs uh I would say are you spraying a little bit? Yeah, of know? course. I yeah. think you got to fish all. Obviously, if you're fishing a deep drop, like let it sink longer, you know. But like, yeah, you can cast that in shallow, like weed lines, as yeah. things even heat up more and can be. If you find a way to ride it above the weed line, like you'll pound fish in shallow water. So also, you can get those sometimes those risers. Right. You right. can throw one of you can throw a little the, woolly bug in front of one of those risers, and they'll be like, "Hey, you know what? That dry fly was cool, but that's cooler." The most fascinating thing about still water fishing is casting woolly boogers at risers and being astonished at how many of them like. If you like cast like see them rise and yeah. put it like on a pretty good like you get that fish like eighty percent. Right, them, you know, you're like this is this is crazy, right. you know. So, Russ pops bugger. Yeah, Can you go deep dive on pops bugger first. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the the one of the cool things about Get the, the pops it. bugger this like had its uh, had its big burn through the competitive world uh, yeah. as well, and it uh, it's one of those flies that just like again, I, there's a time and a place where it is absolutely on fire. Right. It comes in a ton of different colors uh, to explore. Right, that Palmer chenille really like lights it up. Right. Or can like turn it down, uh, which is kind of one of the interesting things about flash. We've talked about that a bunch with streamers and stuff like that, like flash in the sun, flash in the, in, in the different lighting. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but yeah, that, that Palmer Shingle does a lot of the same thing that Hackle does. It helps push water. It helps create a little bit of life to the fly, it breathes it. And then there's a ton of different color combos. So like 
you can start to play and like figure out right. which ones are doing which. And like one of my favorite things about lake fishing in general is like lake fishing with buddies. And oh, you're gonna fish purple. Cool. I'm not gonna fish purple. Right. Yeah. Or right. I'm gonna yeah. fish like. Right. And you can like really start to like piece together what's happening in right. there and right. quickly like come up with some solutions. And that's one of the reasons I really like the pops. Like. A, if they're on it, they're on it. And then B, you can start to play with the colors and then like really refine that mm -hmm. and uh, and start to, you know, put up some numbers. I, I think one of the, my favorite things about lake fishing, man, is like trying to go out and just right. have some, put up some, some really big number days. Right. Like yeah. have some fun. Right. Um, right. Either you're going to go hunt for, for a biggie, right? right? And like maybe, you know, you get a couple or like dude, let's go let's go catch a lot of fish today. Yeah, right. yeah. and like that's one way to do it is to really start to like right. work with your buddy you're fishing <clears> with <throat> uh, mix in different things on your rig and like really start to to figure it out and like like you mentioned with the speed thing like right. oh today they want them as fast as i can bring them in right. they're yeah. like i'm crawling them right. and that's the only time i'm getting bit and it's in like speaking on that it's in it's crazy how if you watch other people fish you see them just do the same thing like if they're retrieving a, a streamer like at a so water you watch them and they just do the same thing like the whole time and they're just like oh it's not on and it's like you don't know that because like yeah. they do eat at different retrieves like they you know it's like crazy and how it's, it's, and that could be like maybe lengthen lengthen leader like an extra like six inches and twitch a little faster like dance it a little bit more and like suddenly it's like thing you know it's like you have and with another great point you made like with your buddies like don't fish the same don't go to the river lake that you've never fished before and all try the exact same Dude, i'm gonna put on leech, this leech pattern and, yeah. and you know and then like oh what do you put on and you guys all have the exact same <laughs> thing. yeah and it's set like, at the exact same depth. right like right. You, yeah you better hope that that's working because you know right. if it's not it's taking you guys all longer to figure that out so right. Um, last thing I want to do is have the same fly on as Yvonne because there's always that chance that like my fly is hotter than his fly that day and I could like, true. chirp a little bit, you know, like you, I want to have that over my friends as well. But yeah. also You'd like to have your buddies asking what, what they're eating. Right. And then hey, it's what also, you use it, man? also, I know they love when I'm like, man, what are they on? You know, like you yeah. got any more of those? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. All right, Usually cool, no. Cool, dude. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's why you got to have more than like four in a box. Right. One to lose. Right. Yeah. Or two to lose, right. one to give, and right. one to keep. Right. Yep, smart. It is the uh, like. And I mean, good on you guys for giving. You know, I'm usually like, the guy who's like, nah, nah. If you're so, uh, looking at still water, like <laughs> this, like through May, what are you targeting first if you're throwing woolly buggers? What do you mean? Like, what kind <laughs> of what kind of features are you targeting? What kind of water are you looking for? All right. So we're May, May, I think, in my opinion, on the lakes, it's kind of like a big transition month. We're not in ice off anymore. We're not into some of the major hatches. We're seeing like the front end of chronomids on a lot of our kind of like big celebrated lakes. Mm -hmm. And so like it's, a, it's an interesting time for the fish. I don't think they're necessarily in as shallow water as they will be in another few weeks. Mm -hmm. And they're not like, you know, sitting in the, in the deep water. It's a... So, so all I'm getting at there is like, I don't have a hard and fast rule. Like, um, we were out uh, a couple weekends ago and like, we went into the shallows thinking we were going to find fish laid up, uh, right after I saw. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, 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 they weren't there. They wanted to be in 10 feet of water and they wanted the flies like, yeah. uh, just hanging in front of them. Right. right. Pretty lethargic still. And, right. and that all changes and that's going to really like, you know, depending on what kind of day you've got, if you've got higher, you know, higher overnight temps, higher daytime temps, less wind, like all that stuff's going to influence yeah. like what you're going to put on. Like if you, if you feel like you're in a warmer, warmer weather pocket, I think pulling flies is like right. probably where I'd start. Mm -hmm. Right. I'd probably right. put on an intermediate cast out uh, a selection of, of buggers mm -hmm. really and like see what happens and like I'll, I'll mess with the retrieve a little bit like slow retrieve yeah. fast retrieve like right. um super very like and and then do a couple fly changes and then i'm gonna do a line change i think there's a, a general thought <clears throat> in a lot of for a lot of anglers that somehow still water fishing can be boring but like you're mentioning you can vary up a lot of stuff. Yeah, you could say the same thing about river right. fishing outside right. of like if the, outside of the river moving, like right. if you just make the same right. cast in the same pool, right. I right. would consider that to be extremely boring. Right. Absolutely. Um, and it, to me, it's the same thing in lake fishing. Like right. if you really want to like get into fish, like you've got to, it, it's all about replication. I'm like, right. oh, that worked. All right. How do I continue to refine that to find more success? Right. Like, 
Uh, and that's, again, that's where like working with your buddies is to me, one of the biggest yeah. things, uh, on lakes. And it's a lot, it takes longer if you go do it by yourself right. and you're walking up right. to a new lake and it's a new day. Like, yeah. right. it just takes longer. You gotta yeah. be ready for that. And it's like, there's some grind time. Right. And then you'll get a window and you're like, dude, if that was this crazy. is yeah. it. Yeah. I need to remember this and then yeah, like the piece that together. The fish you know? are mo- moving, right. not the water, right? right? Like, well, the water's moving, right? You have current, you have like totally. wind and wind pushing water into like banks and stuff. But for the most part, those fish are cruising along those features, right? So you're just waiting. You're trying to be right, right time, right place. I as just, opposed to like river fishing, you're just sort of looking. River fishing, they live right, there, right? right and they'll, right. they'll move within could, their pools, right? For right, different right. emergences, right? But like you're you and I have talked about this with lakes too, where right. like you can have the theory of like, I'm going to two step down this bank right. or I'm going to stand here. Right. Cause like, this is a, this is a, a ambush point. Right. Like they've got to swim around right. this. Right. They, They'll swim to me. Right. right. And like eventually they're going to come to you, you know? Yep. I think the boring, when people say still waters are boring, I take that as like, it's the figuring out process of still waters. Mm-hmm. Like right. that can be, I mean, it, it's boring and it's like the most defeating thing ever. You're like, wow. I went out to this huge lake, cast these flies out that like people told me were going to work, like didn't get touched for four hours and the wind was just blowing. And it's like, this is horrible, you know? I, I wholeheartedly agree, but it's like, suddenly you find that window out there, like they move in and you're still out there grinding and you have that like good hour. It will. That hour can change your like week, man. Right. right. And then, and then, but remember that hour and then like go try different stuff. Like go, don't go to the lake that you don't have success at and do the same thing, you know, like and generally to try new things, new times, new, new everything. Well, I would also say like like, what changed that made that hour happen, right? Right. Was there an emergence that came off? Was like, did you move to a different part of the lake? Right. Were you over, did you add six feet of tippet? Like, you know what I mean? Like right. there's so many little subtle factors that really will affect those kind of things right. that, um, and, and, you know, obviously sometimes it's just great dumb luck and right. that's the best. Right. <laughs> I've, uh, I have plenty of those stories with still waters. Yeah. I, I went to go get a beer once out of the truck, left my rod on the bank and, uh, came back a couple beers in hand and my, I just heard, zzzz, <laughs> Look down, the rod's like stuck between two rocks, just like real zooming, like the the rod's right. pointed right at the right at the fish, and you're like, man, we haven't touched anything all day. This is my day. Right. right. And then after that, it was like, bang, bang. Right. I remember that. I, know, yeah. I remember that was like, and then after that, yeah, that evening it was you, me, we were up there with Cole, I think, and like yeah. that last two hours was like, dude, we can't leave. Like this is right. We were borderline about to yeah. leave, and then it was like, this is the last beer. Big fish, big fish, big fish yeah, for the yeah. last like two hours, and we're like, man, we got a long drive home, but like we can't, like we no, can't leave, cannot leave, yeah, like at all. You, you that's what the, the still waters. You just can't, like, just take take the beatings. You right. cannot leave, like mm-hmm. you cannot right. leave. It's like Mike Tyson uh, <laughs> right. punch out or knockout. You just gotta like take it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, right. start a new game. Yeah. Let's do this again. Cool. There's the bugger section of uh, Five Flies. Easily have done 54 minutes on buggers. 100%. Yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Next. 2023, folks. Yeah. yeah. The buggers. The bugger episode coming soon. All right. Let's do five number three. You do one more? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Hit him, hit him, boy. You want a big one or just another taste? Do one like you. All right. Modest. <sighs> is that big or is that? Yeah, it's modest. It's very modest. Shout out to Owen. Yes. Lock and Co. Yes, thank you. Rick and Owen do a great job. They really do. Cheers, gents. Yeah, cheers. cheers, boys. Cheerio. Hey, let's get that on the mic, please. Oh. Cheers, I'm cheers. <laughs> I'm kidding. And the rest of the Whoa, dude. Fly number three. <sighs> it's feeling better. The booby leech. Uh, fly number three, Sexton's booby leech in black. Tanner. Do you fish the booby leech? Are you a big booby guy? I don't fish them a ton, um, but it's a fun. I mean, it's a no. fun way to mix in. I think it's if you want to get weird and you want to try different stuff and fish water like that, not a whole lot of other people are fishing in unique, cool ways. Like that is a good way to do it. And you, it's crazy how like productive. I've faced like, wildly I've faced different this fly before. Like, Russ will be over here and be like, "Dude, I will fish that fly and catch nine thousand four hundred. I'm so excited to talk about this one. Yeah, I've right. faced so you with like, the booby leech yeah, before. Abs- absolutely. So in your um, face, just. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Bam. And he got he got skunked. It was great. Good Ooh, times. Whoa. I mean it was a more is a morning session. He got skunked in the morning session. He, he caught was, fish in the afternoon. In the, in the first eight yeah. hours he didn't get any, but you know, the yeah. last three. He remembers uh he remembers <laughs> the story so different than I do, but 
That I do. I do. Yeah. What was you? How did you recall that? I recall this one also being a stupid, dumb luck when I, I started walking back towards the bank because I was about to give up. <laughs> and I left it in there. Yeah. And a, After I was catching a few fish on streamers, I believe to start the That's morning. That's not true so, at all. I, I, I could. Oh man. That's I like how true. this story is going. Might be, I could tell you the exact same. We might the exact be, cove we were at. We might be remembering different days. I don't believe it, it was a chartreuse. Uh, one of those things. And yeah, that was black, up. dude. Oh, it was black. Yeah, Maybe it's different day. White and chartreuse yeah. version of that? Yeah. But is what you're thinking of? I was thinking, but it, white the and day chartreuse I'm talking was, about. He was fishing a white and chartreuse one, and he was like, this things don't work, dude. He's walking away, and then he's like, yeah, he's like, back. No, dude, I can <laughs> show you the picture. <laughs> like, oh, I I'll like, put the, gotta be kidding. I'll put the picture in here. The, the, you took a picture of the fish that had a little black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black booby leech. That was up at North D. Yeah. So, how yeah. do you like to fish the booby leech? Memories, bro. I think this is, we could call this the third woolly bugger. I'll put a woolly yeah, bugger with an asterisk yeah, here. A, okay. uh, woolly bugger with some foam eyes. That's it. it uh, which, which is what it yeah. is instead Start of a Start manhandling that I'll thing. touch it a little bit. Yeah. I like, I like touching flies. Um, so for any of, uh, any of you uh, who, are, who aren't familiar with the booby fly, it essentially gets its name because it's got a cylinder of foam that's tied in right behind the eye of the hook, right? And that foam gives the fly neutral buoyancy. Mm -hmm. And you can do a lot of different things with a booby fly. Um, really my f two favorite ways to fish it, uh, maybe three. Um, I'll give you three options to fish the booby fly. One, you can fish it on like a washing line. So you're going to fish a floating line and you're going to fish a booby at the very end of it. And on two droppers, you're going to fish like chronomets. And we'll get into that in a little bit. I've never done the, that before. That's it's crazy. It's a crazy effective way. So like when fish are like nearing the, the you're, you're, if you're fishing an indicator rig and you're like shortening up to, it just keeps your flies in the kill zone like so effectively. It's awesome. And a lot of times they're going to take this thing in the waves, right? Yeah. Uh, so like you'll get them eating this and your chronomets as they're hanging down off your long tags, right? So you can fish on a washing line. That's a cool way to do it. The other way I like to do it, like uh, sweep lines. Um, we're going to get real lakey with this fly. Yeah, but sweep lines move. Um, like So you have a density compensated line, which sinks like at an even rate like this, right? Yeah. A, um, a sweep line, as, as some manufacturers call it, like Airflow has sweep lines. Rio's got their fathoms. They move where it sinks in the belly, right? So it kind of sinks like this. So if you do this last, this dives straight down retrieves across here the lines, and then yeah. strike back up. Right. So that like downward presentation, like if you think about the way things work in a lake, at least in my head, things fall into a lake or emerge out of a lake. So like that downward presentation can be really cool. And the third way I like to fish it is on like a type five, um, with a single booby and you literally drag this thing through the weeds yeah. and you pop it down and let it float back up, yeah. you pop it down, you let it float back up. That's how I found success on that day. Yeah, and so you're burying your fly line As down in the in the stuff, and then this thing floats up and then dives down and floats up. So you move that really slow on that retrieve. Um, and so anyway, that, the, it, it adds a lot of versatility of how you can fish a lake by adding some foam eyes to a woolly bugger. Yeah. And Sexton's booby's cool. Uh, he's been doing this stuff like... He's been fishing that thing at Pyramid and catching those giant cutthroats, and uh, it's a it's a cool it's a cool fly. It opens up some different techniques to to fishing lakes. All right, this is a super simple fly. What does it have? Marabou, Marabou, like Estaz, Estaz, and foam. <laughs> some foam. It's like if three if the three elements. That's like kind of like my sweet spot for a fly. Yeah. It's got yeah. three things. Over that, you can complicate it if you get more than three. Uh, the old woolly booger. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> Marabou, <laughs> Chenille, Hackle. Done. <laughs> Bingo, bango, bongo. There we go. Tanner, anything to add there? To I, I think both of our minds were blown by yeah, the first I think, technique. I mean, Russ has that stuff way, yeah. way more down than us. So. That's why we called him up. That's why he's here. I yeah. like lakes. So yeah. They're fun. I like lakes. I like lamps. All right. Uh, let's get the question, question and answer portion of uh, the show. The woolly buggers are concluded for the show. In yeah, case yeah. any of you are yeah. tuning out at woolly this point. Woolly buggers are now done. So you're 54 <laughs> minutes. We got it done in like 38. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Say la vie. Pew pew. All right. So we're at the question and answer portion of uh, Five Flies. Russ is eating a cutie. Tanner's doing Lord knows what. <clears throat> but we're going to answer your questions about fly fishing. Good questions from last month. Again, you get a prize pack if your uh, question is selected. So drop any questions you have about June fly fishing here in Colorado or 
generally anywhere. We'll do our best to answer it. Um, prize pack from Umqua and Rising. So uh, leave that comment in the comment below. Let's get to the questions. The first one bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 from Jared Jennings. Jared what Jennings. type of things do you consider when selecting what flies to use as your trailers in a double nymph rig? Tanner, hot seat. Like what? Like factors? Like yeah, like what factors? Like, like what, how do you choose them? Gosh, I mean, I'm gonna look at how, what flows are at, what clarity's at, what the water, all that stuff is, and then I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go as far as like lifting rocks up, but it's yeah, gonna be who would do that? Time of a lot of extra effort, uh, right? Um, yeah, a lot of extra effort. <laughs> <laughs> why know what? Why but, know what's in the gonna, river? I mean, you know? If you, you know, you're gonna have your favorites. Like I'm, I always tell you guys, I'm like I'm a fan of my favorite flies. Like I've fished in Colorado. I feel enough to know that if it's March, I'm going to have probably a stone fly and a blooming olive or a midge on, you know, if I'm fishing a free stone, it's like, so, so you're fe- picking your droppers based on prevailing hatches. Right. In right. A lot of the, ways. right. Like dominant hatches. And then, you know, your favorites from there. So if, if it's a mayfly hatch, I'm going to probably be fishing pheasant tail. Like I'm always starting mm-hmm. with the pheasant. Do you, tail. How do you like, wh- how do you decide if you're going to choose a bead bead, like a glass bead? I always go. You know, I mean, I always go try no to bead. I'm always going soft tackle, so like tungsten soft tackle, something like that. And I mean, I, that's everywhere. You know, I'll, the weight to me, like I mean, in gold beads, it's like free stones. I'm either fishing a gold bead, but m- most of my droppers will always be weighted, um, and that's mostly I'm going to change sizes. So if I'm fishing a tougher tail water, like obviously I'm going to size down quite a bit. Um, free stone, I'm, you know, I'm going to get away with try to get away with 16s and 18s first, yeah. um, that sort of stuff. But yeah, usually it's going to be this time of year, stone fly junk bug to some sort of bait. If you're picking like a dropper for hopper dropper fishing, what's your thought process there? What looks like the most different bugs that are floating by under the surface. So again, I'm going to hit back to a hair's ear or a pheasant tail every time. You know, that could be a caddis. That could be a stone fly. That could be mayfly. That could be just about anything. Looks just like something efficient. Have you ever heard of jigged flies? I've, you know, now that I've been talking to Russ more over the years, yeah, and Josh and our good friends over at Umqua. I, I do fish a few more jig flies. Right. Um, there's some jig flies I really like as droppers for dry dropper rigs for sure. Um, just because they do get down. Uh, it's it's a good fly that you can get down on a smaller size. So it's not going to like suck your dry fly down because you have to size up. It's going to sink fast and be in the yeah. strike zone quick too. So, What's your process, Russ? Same. Same. Confidence. Confidence flies are key. Yeah. I, I don't think that can be like overstated Dad's enough. What's that? Dad's money. That's money. Yeah. That's it. That's all my whole box of flies. Yeah. My monies. Yeah. But like uh, fishing flies that you have confidence in. And then or like even if it's not your confidence, but like going into the shop and like talking with, you know, someone like Tanner or like, I do not fish this all the time. Like, oh, right. all right. Like yeah. uh, that's some bot confidence. Like I'm, I'm into that. Right. Um, that is real. It Absolutely. Bot confidence is real. For sure. Yeah. And like that's the reason you come into a fly shop, dude. Like if you can't right. be out on the water every day, like these guys are talking to people that are on the water right. or they're on the water. Like right. I think that I think that's huge. Put that in the uh, the checkbook. The fact. Uh, fact. That, 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 that's what it's we're the doing. First fact. And then um, yeah, we're slow pace today. Yeah, on the on the on the jig fly front, man. I, I'm a big fan of those. the The issue I was going to ask you about this, like the issue I run into with those, is that like a lot of them are factory barbless, right? So like right. tying them in line, right. it's easy to lose whatever you're tying off of it. Right. So like, are you right. an eye to eye guy? We kind of alluded to that. Yep. Yeah. Just eye to eye. You're keep, eye to keep, eye for like simple. most of your keep it stuff simple. anyway. Uh if it's, I mean, if it's barbless, I'd eye every time. Um, if it's not barbless, I'm usually just going in line. Unless it's like a big action-y soft tackle, or something like that. I'll try to do something to give it some sort of action, something like that. But you go loop knots. Keep it pretty simple. Yeah, you. Uh, they're not allowed in comp, so I don't like fun fish that oh, way. Yeah, He's yeah. a tagging guy. Yeah, yeah tagging tag tag guy. You couldn't go. What if you and tag in loop? Though? Oh, I think it'd be destructive. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be destructive. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. But you know, I'm lazy. Right. <laughs> I don't like catching as many fish as Russ likes to catch, you know, so yeah. I'm in line all day. Yeah. You know? Do Happy works. place. He's Happy place. Here. He's got his f- fish checker. I got. <laughs> yeah, he's. <laughs> I'm, click, I'm clicking away over there. I'm fishing a team of nine flies. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just right. No right. tangles just ever. Right. That's it. Right. I can simulate a hatch, man. I go all the way from the bottom to the surface. <laughs> right, it's, right. it's incredible. All nine stages. And like nine casts, yeah. I've like simulated the hatch. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> That's the secret. I knew it. That is. It is the secret. I knew it. There we go. So that's uh that's a good question. Appreciate good the question. Answers. Appreciate Jerry it, Jennings. guys. Yes. Jared Jennings, thank you. Uh and then next up, 
do 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 Oh, this is a pretty good one too, though. Damn. Chris Whitney. Dude, I'm cool to do a bonus question. You want to do a bonus? Bonus? All right. So we'll do Chris's first. Chris Whitney asked... I was fortunate to be up on my local freestone, the Poudre River, to witness what I thought was a midge hatch. Although there were both midges and blue wings in the air and on the water, I tried my best imitation, threw it, got nothing but refusals all afternoon. What are some tips and tricks when you're seeing refusals like this? Should I focus on size or color? Or stage? I added the last part. Mm. Yeah. The, ho- the host, the little flavor there. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, I was going to say, I, I would, the first thing I would do, uh, in that scenario is, is really look at, <laughs> look at the, the rise form, right? Are they actually breaking the surface and, um, and actually taking an adult off the surface? Or are they, you know, kind of coming up and sipping the emerger down through the film? I think that to me would be the first thing I'd look at to determine what I'm going to do before anything. Um, I'm a size number one, right? So like stage and then size for me. And then I think colors important but not like uh you know i'm not gonna lose my mind if i don't have the right color body of yeah. a fly uh, what i really want to do is just get a great drift size and shape right yeah yeah uh, because i mean generally when a fish is looking up there's gonna be light up there so it's side, backlit yeah. size silhouette is so you're looking at yeah. silhouette and f- silhouette for the most part tanner uh i mean both those things yeah. maybe that's the one time i will maybe like lengthen my leader size you know size down on my tippet yeah. which i don't say a lot it's true Dang, that is dude. a rare um, occasion but uh like the eagle have you guys ever you guys have been at blueing olive or mid at the eagle and you're yeah. in there in the evening and there's like nine trillion fish rising in you're like oh this is gonna be so easy yeah and they're just not eating your fly you're like this doesn't make any sense they're yeah. eating literally every fly out here and they can't eat my fly so yeah i mean change it ch- yeah change change those things i mean yeah. stages everything like that and fish multi-nymph or multi like dry flies two stages at once hit those type of zones yeah. you know um, different silhouettes. Small little dropper. The other yeah. thing you could do if you're covering right. rising fish, man, is throw a curveball. Right. And give them something that's not anything right. hatch related, but it's surf. Like I, right. I find with brown trout fisheries in particular, like there's a good population of browns, like a change up fly. Right. Like that's an opportunistic big eat. Rainbows, I feel like really right. get keyed in on like, right. yeah. I want, I want exactly this part of the hatch. I don't give a, I don't care about right. anything else. Right. And those are, those are maddening fish. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah, that's, I mean, that's true. Like you can be in the middle of a <laughs> blueing olive hatch and fuck this caddis fish. are supposed to be there. Fuck those fish. A caddis could catch a fish. Like yeah. it's just a fish. The fly has to make a little bit of sense, you know, right. the fish has seen it within the Enough last sense. year, you know, it's the old Russ Miller. Maybe fish have memories. Maybe uh-huh. fish memories are real. You know, yeah. you want to be first on their mind and you want to be last on their mind. Damn, dude, this sounds like like a like is the a advi- advi- yeah advice for like relationships that, too. That's true though, right? Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> like you can catch fish tailing on a hatch. I feel like that's when you have your best chance because they're kind of still keyed in on a drake. You know, yeah. like oh, like there's not fifty trillion that you're trying to fool. You're one of three. You know, or you want to be the yeah first. Like they're excited when they first not first they, your last that first blue, blueing off that comes off. Like maybe not if it's only one flying around, but you see like a few hit the water. Yeah. Boom! There's a couple subtle rises. That's Those are I'm, eager risers. That's probably when I want to be fishing because yeah. that fish just wants bluing olives. For whatever reason, he's ready for them to be there. And there are times to uh, – I mean, this doesn't necessarily speak to this question, but there are times when it's like bluing olives should be hatching and you can cast a likely spot and catch them. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Like you can right. prospect <laughs> dries right. and catch fish before they're, hat- before they're rising because they're like – they're. They're waiting. typically they're just, in those yeah. spots waiting because things are happening, right? They're, they're like, oh, 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 maybe I should be over here. Oh, 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 oh there's one. Oh, I knew it. I knew they were going to be here. <laughs> yeah. It's a great feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's as good of a feeling as like casting to a target and like <laughs> right, right, right. converting. Right. right. Especially on a smaller fly. <clears throat> yeah. Especially it's a lot on of a smaller fun. fly. Especially on a smaller fly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. So good question Changes. there. Appreciate it. And then we're going to have one last question, a bonus question. The two-minute two money round. Yeah. From Sheldon we Schupfman. Got, you got to be fast, Sheldon. It says runoff is daughter. going to start and had already started or has already started. What are some flies or other techniques someone can use and what kind of other waters can you fish during the runoff season? Hmm. I wonder what kind of waters you could fish. Still waters. Season. Starts still waters. with S. Yeah. yeah. And, now, and ends with till waters. Not tail waters. No. Till waters. S- S- 
still waters with woolly buggers, of course. Yeah. Lakes are a killer. Yeah. Yep. Lakes are a great option. Warm water is a good option. Warm water is a great option. And like, you know, if as long as they're... As long as there's some visibility, like yep. because a river's swollen doesn't mean it's bad, man. Right. I I remember fishing the blue and silver thorn one year and like dude, like it, it comes out of the dam super clear. It'll be crazy high. Uh you can go float it. But like those fish will push up like I caught a sidewalk fish. Right. Like, yeah. They're they're literally sitting in dumb places and you're fishing like a length of your rod. Right. Uh but like dude, the fish don't leave the river. As long as right. you've got some clarity, if it's yep. really big, like right. You're looking for fish want the same thing. They want to sit in soft stuff generally. Mm -hmm. So like you, you can soft stuff near fast stuff. Yeah, and right. and and a lot of times I I tend to like high water. Uh, it concentrates the fish. Like it, it limits right. the places they can sit, and the, some of the obvious places get really obvious. Right. Right. Um, and for flies, man, big worm guy at high mm -hmm. water. <laughs> yeah. We talked uh, about it last month. Yeah, yeah. it's a great it's one. The junk bugs. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of junk flies like. Uh, you talk about like soft tackle pheasant tail, like that right. one with like a pink bead right. or uh, mm -hmm. an orange bead is right. an awesome option. Right. Um, stuff that gets noticed. That's and catching fish in high water is almost as rewarding as getting like that still water barber down. You know, you're like, oh, you know, you're like, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah. You know, because there's not gonna be anyone else out there. You're no like, one else. And barber just goes. You like, should mention uh, weighed responsibly. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 To stick to the bank usually. Yeah, yeah. You know? A lot of times when it's that high, you really don't even don't need to put on waders. You right. don't, yeah. You don't actually want to be in the water at all. Correct. Yeah. The only place you can stand is the place where the fish are actually right. hanging out. Right. Second fact. I also think, and this is going to le lean into my nerd, my geology nerddom. Oh. But let's talk about hydrographs, right? So you have the rising limb, falling limb, and that's like the general trend you see over... See his limb, his of, limb is up. The yeah. course of spring runoff. Yeah, so okay. you start to melt, melt that snow, the water rises, and then you run out of that snow to melt, and the water starts to fall. And that's like the, you see it on every hydrograph. You look at the annual hydrograph, you see it every year. But in addition to that, like the snow melts in pulses. It, like you get like pulses of snow melt, and then the river will start to drop a little bit. So you want to fish. And so you want to drop those, drop those like fish after the peak, oh. in like in the grand sense, but also in like the like the the macro sense and also the micro sense. Like you can, Dang. if you catch it on the fall, like on the Colorado, you can. Like I love swinging streamers right up against the bank and then ripping them back up, like twitching them back up, and then why is that? Yeah. Why, why? Why? Yeah. Why do you like yeah. uh, so? Like as anglers, I think we always yeah. love fishing a drop versus a rise, right? Yeah. Why do you like fishing the drop? Because so there's less pressure coming. Like you have less pressure coming down, but then the shear stress, if we want to get really nerdy, isn't carrying the shear stress generated by the flow of the the, of the turbidity river isn't Will be carrying less. as much sediment, right? And so you have clear a, a little bit clearer conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing to take into account is. The water temperature thing, but that's a separate, like a separate thing. But as like as that water falls, you're generally like that big pulse is going to be colder, and then as it sort of dissipates, you're going to start to warm up a little bit. But yeah, like swinging streamers down into banks and then ripping them back up, or He's rolling. like going back up. Like I used to do this. I used to go like swing them down and then go like take a nap or something like that, and then like walk back up the same stretch of river and fish upstream into those same pockets and then rip it back down and you'd catch the same number of fish awesome. it was hilarious did you really learn that in geology class or just by going fishing well i because mean I I, took i'm my, an anthropology major yeah. and i i seem to know the same thing right right Russ right. probably right. isn't a geology right major. no i know he probably favors those Look, but i, I gotta well, make though. my ge my geology degree worthwhile right so i gotta <laughs> like respect, call respect. on my flu fluvial geomorphology <laughs> Uh, classes respect and like respect. try to like hey, contextualize respect. that into fly, into fly fishing right like anybody can know that fact hey. it's hey. not like hey. it is science but it's not like it's mind science blowing. Yeah. it's not mind blowing it's just simply a pattern you see on the other thing i like about a falling yeah. river too is like a lot of times the fish will get pushed up in easier water and they haven't fallen back into their deeper lies yep yeah. just easy easy pickings science science opportunistic Fish feed opportunistically. Yeah, I just needed to get a little geology out there because uh, otherwise I'd feel like I'd. Let me just say this: I'm really happy too we much did money. For we my did the. I'm glad, I'm glad we did the bonus question. Yeah, the answer was yeah. worth it. Uh, my we've got something from Uncle coming for that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that <laughs> one, dude. That was that was fire. There we go. All right, <laughs> the bone was fired up. Let's get to 
Yeah, look, man, I just want to get I'm excited about my college degree that I got like 15 years ago, you know? Hey, fly <laughs> fishing, here we are. Here we go. All right, let's wrap it up. We're going to do flies number four and five. <clears throat> Fly number four is... Doing something different. The Titan Tube Midge. I think this is like the silver gray. Yeah. yeah. White. It's the color of our beards. Yeah, we Not old... Mine. Yeah. No, you look great, man. Thank you. Right. You look great. Thank you. <laughs> Yvonne's only two years older than me, too, in case you guys are wondering. That's not true, man. I think I'm like four years older than you, dog. I just turned 40 like last weekend. Hey, congrats. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm, a, I'm happy to be alive. Yeah. I'm Every day's a gift, you know? <laughs> Never been better. Never been better. Just happy to be out there. <laughs> yep. Sun shining, beautiful scenery. Better Let's go than fly fishing. Work, my guy. I woke up this morning. <laughs> Best part of my day. I woke, I woke up, baby. Yeah. Still here. I still, still here. put on my pants one leg at a time. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Thank you. So, we should start with the birthday boy. Birthday boy, what do you like about the Titan Two Pitch? I think it's a great impressionistic chronobin. Yeah. Right. Like, like I said, we're we're coming into um, we're on the front end. Yeah, the front end of the chronobin hatch. It's uh, what was the saying? First and last. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not first, you're last. Well, you also want to be last. The uh, uh, I want I want I want yeah. to be first on their call list and the last one they call to. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. What was that dating advice? Yeah. Wake up, wake up thinking about me. Go to bed thinking about exactly, me. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Chronomids. Yeah. Yeah. We're in yeah. it now. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's the season we're coming into. <laughs> that's a really great bug for that. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, so, so anyway, it's got a, it's got ostrich around the collar, right? Chronomids when they're, when they're in their merchant states. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's good. That's <laughs> so you good. were saying you were it's saying. got ostrich up at the up at the collar, and and as the chronomids, their gills really come out, and they really yeah. kind of they the those gills swim a lot, right? And um and that ostrich just does a good job of that. Landon has a super cool way of uh, of bringing this fly together with the the wire inside the tubing, right? I think yeah. it adds a really cool kind of look to it. And if you look at chronomid patterns, right, they have this like. It's this weird like solidity and like translucency to them that I think this pattern mm -hmm. does a really good job of imitating. Yep. Before uh, I ask you, Tanner, I'm going to mention it's not on the blog yet, but uh, coming in August, Phil Rowley and uh, Lander will be doing a Stillwater class uh, here at the shop. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, maybe that's you awesome. get yourself yeah, on like really a awesome. pre sign up. You know, those two guys, big still are guys. Phil will do the washing line for you, but I guarantee you. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. I low-key am going to try to figure out a way to be there. Yeah, I was going to, I'll take it. Anyone yeah. that can yeah. fish a single chronomid at depth and with confidence, em. like, right. that is a master. Right, <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's the guy, like, I see put that on. I'm like, yeah, right, buddy. Like, best of luck to you. Yeah, and then Phil <laughs> fishes. I'll be right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. I got a team like, on. <laughs> yeah. All right, I've got my nine. <laughs> And Phil's over there smacking him. You're like, I don't understand this at all. Yeah, it's wild. I guess I'll leave now. Yeah. So stay tuned to the blog for that email, all that stuff. So we'll announce that soon. But Tanner, chronomids. How do you like to fish a chronomid? You big bobber guy? Yeah. I mean, I like bobber down at Stillwater is just my favorite type of bobber down. I think that's probably yeah. the so, only time where I like look forward to going and fishing bobbers. That is true. Like I like. Describe the, like, the moment in advance of that. Mm. Bobber going, it's yeah. you almost know that it's coming before it actually happens. Right. I don't even know how you can explain that, but you're like, you'll be like sitting there for 20 minutes, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then all of a sudden, you're just like, like, your bobber, like, I think that thing's about to go down, and suddenly it's just like, funk, and you're like, does it sometimes like, it'll do the little tickle? Yeah, it's it's like, like, dun -dun -dun -dun. Yeah. <laughs> the best is when it doesn't yeah. tickle and it just right. drowns, right? Man. Right? It's like, I, I would, I would say, fishing a bobber is kind of like opening this, like, right. yeah. when it. You're like, ooh, man, they're going to be good. Right, right. Like, when it goes down like that, you're like, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it's like laughs> if, you, if, you're with your, if you're with your friends, I don't care who you are, if you're, like, lake fishing with your friends and you guys are, like, in a line and your bobber goes down, you are screaming something. Yeah. Like, you have to make gonna, some you, noise. Like, you have your phrase. You have something, but you're screaming, like, woo, you know, like, just because you want to see this. Oh, you know? But as a friend, like, you, as a friend yeah. if you're in that line, you also think, like, maybe they're coming. Here, like right. I'm getting ready I'm right. getting ready like here it comes I'm gonna double here this comes. one up yeah. here it comes here it comes here it comes, here comes, here comes, here comes. Like, double baby yeah, yeah. you know like, yeah. So yeah. Are, I mean, yeah sometimes those fish be moving in pods yeah. moving in pods yeah, we so, had that happen uh, like last was that last yeah. summer right yeah so waters I mean everyone 
is kind of competitive when they fish. They'll say they're not, you know? No one really wants to see their friend catch a bigger fish than they catch. Like, if you've told me that, like, you're not good enough friends with that guy. Yo, I guess. bro, I'd love to, have, I, love to watch you catch a big one. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I want to watch you. I want to see want, you guys I, succeed. I, I'm not mad or anything. Like, I like you catching big fish, but I also, like, Enjoy it. Enjoy catching the big fish and telling you that I caught the big fish yeah, as yeah. I enjoy getting that. That might be your game. favorite pastime. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like at a still water, the, it is, there is no like, oh, he got to the better hole than me. Oh, he, right. That is true. The, he, he got the fish first. Like it is like right. mono a mono out there. Like if, it's a big lake. Yeah. Big lake. Yeah. You're not in anyone's way. You don't, you're in your little no. 10 foot area. And that's about the only you hope, you hope, you know, I don't know. I don't even really know what I'm trying to say, but uh, you're letting rip. I love it. <laughs> you want to you want to riff off that? Nah, it's okay. <laughs> letting a rip. Yeah, yeah. We'll I, would, I, I, would, I would say like the bo- bobbers and chronomas though. Like the the sick thing is like it is like the perfect presentation right. for those. Like right. there's uh, you know I talked about the washing line being awesome, but right. like if you can get the depth right, right. you yeah. just let them hang right where the emergence is, and like you're in the mix the right. entire time. Right. And then when you get chop on the lake, you're like, oh. Even better because <laughs> right. the thing's just like, beep, 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 and you're right. like, anytime now. Right. And like, you can like almost sense the, like right. you said, the bobber right. like getting a little heavier. Yeah. You're like, oh, dude, it is like yeah. sticking now. Yeah. Right. It's, and then it's just like, Wah. yeah, it's, I don't know why. Because, yeah, because chronomids, so they emerge vertically. Gaseous right? bubble, those right. little gills right. coming right. up, baby. Right, right. You always like, you, you make the cast and like your line is coming back to you perfect. It's not like making the big, it's mm. just like, and it's like, and then, yeah, you get that little chop and it's like, it's like, oh my God. Like, yeah. And then sometimes if the chop just yeah. kicks up just a little bit right. more, you're like, oh, this is it. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, 100%. Right. The confidence like, chop, yeah. the uh-huh. increase of chop it's is like, really like the f- oh yeah, here we go. It's you like a 12 mile an hour wind that's right. just like made right. for right. chronomid fishing. Which is nice this spring. You force it. A lot of 40 miles, miles an hour is a little <laughs> aggressive. A lot of 12 mile an hour winds. <laughs> yeah. So I think the forecast for every place in the state this week is like 20 mile per hour winds. Gusts of forty, like ah, mm-hmm. a little too much. Unrelenting this spring, yeah. but next week looks good. Yeah, yeah. There's always next week. There's always that next. But week. we found a little pocket for tomorrow, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that works out. And also, we'll tease this. We're talking about doing a Stillwater reading water uh, here in June, so watch out for that. Uh, maybe late June. We're no Landon and Phil Rowley, but it ought to be pretty good. Yeah, it'll at least be entertaining, yeah. folks. Right. Uh, right. Come on. Right. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah. We'll see uh, we Tanner struggle the, yeah. as Russ smacks him. And it'll Whoa, be either that or it could go the opposite yeah. way, yeah. man. It's true. It's true. Yeah. The king of the the king of watching something just. Oh, the king of the casual. The king know? of the casual. Yeah, the <laughs> casual king. <laughs> casual king himself. Russ will be like, "Yeah, I've got twelve." Roger will be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fish my five weight." <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, I'm dealing with twelve different yeah, tangles. Right, right, right. <laughs> that is true. That yeah. would actually be a great dynamic. <laughs> The Mr. Simple versus uh, Mr. Complicated. And we will be laughing hysterically quite spy a bit versus throughout spy. the whole, whole day. Yeah, it should be a great episode. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It should be a great episode. Coming sometime, we don't know yet. Yeah. Right. Like, Could hopefully year, yeah, so. hopefully this June, July, but maybe not. We'll see. It'll be before, no 20, promises. before 2025. No promises. All right. Fly number five. We grabbed two different versions of this fly. <clears throat> The jigged Frenchie, and then the, is it the Frenchie Chronomid? Frenchie or is Chronomid. It, or is yeah. it the Chronomid Frenchie? Frenchie Chronomid. Frenchie Chronomid. Boom. So, Tanner, which one do you prefer when fishing still waters? There is a right answer. I'm going to say the jigged on my bottom <laughs> as my bottom. Big jig guy. I just, I mean, I, th- I, the, I like bland flies. It's bland, you know? I... I have both flies. I will fish both those flies if you give me a choice, but just because I know you feel differently, I certainly will fish jigged. Because I do. I mean, I like it. You know, it's it's basic. It's a basic fly. Basic flies get eaten. Versatile. Versatile Versatile. as well. We'll work in uh, still waters and Mm -hmm. moving waters. We're talking still waters right now. Yeah, we are. We are. But I mean. I mean, we talked about the versatility of the bugger. But that fly for our competition is not versatile. It has one job and one job. One job only. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So hopefully that will that'll also come to the blog soon. You know? Monday. We'll see. We're going Mo- Monday. We're going Monday. Pictures we're and video to follow. Uh, we're, we're working on the catalog. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. There's a chance. Yeah. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. So these are uh, Lance Egan patterns. Yep. Lance Egan. Um, 
good personal friend of yours, yeah? Yeah, Lance is a great, great buddy. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I... so Best caster in the West? He did win that, that title. Did he? Yeah. I was just joking. Best of the West. He did? There was a, do you remember that whole casting competition? No shit. Yeah. Anyway, Lance is, a, Lance is a really great caster, yeah. uh, which is helpful on the lakes. That somehow yeah. ties in. Right. How's that for a little factoid? There we go. Uh, boom. Uh, so I think to your point, man, that, that jig fly is like your bottom anchor. If you're going to do like a chronomid rig is a really great one for that, right? It kind of almost gets that balanced presentation right. a little bit. Slows um, it down, coming back a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. um, the French chronomid. I remember seeing that uh, with Lance for the first time we were fishing Daniel's Reservoir uh, just over the Utah border in Idaho. And, like, it's a big chronomid fishery. Like, uh, we, were, we, were, we were drifting it, and um, he was like, dude, he's like, I'd, I'd be fishing this if it was me. Like, this is my go-to chronomid. And I was like, really? Like, just the pheasant tail, man? Like, and I had all these, like, you know, techie, you know, techie uh, cool chronomids, yeah. I thought. And he was like that's what I'm fishing like super casual. <laughs> and then he was like up like five fish immediately. I was like, okay, I guess I'll tie some Frenchy chronomids. Like that's pretty easy. Uh, it's a fly that gets it done, man. It's like, again, fishing the basics and that's on, uh, that's on our new, um, uh, 290 hook, which is a cool, right. cool lake hook, super heavy wire. Right. So when you're encountering some of those big fish, you have no issues. Right. Cause Dude, like, you know, if you're fishing 16, right. like, the, a lot of times, I don't know about you, man, but I, I'll downsize a lot of these flies. Like, when it feels like it's getting tough and I know they're on chronomids, like... I'll fish, like, 18, you know? Oh. It's, you yeah. might miss more takes, but you get more You takes. get bites, you, you get right? Bites, you know? And I think that's a lot of people... Especially people, early season. Right. Yeah, yeah people, like, put on, like, tins right away. And right. You're like, right. Right. It's like, I've fished <clears throat> lakes for quite some time. I've never seen a midge flying around that's this big, you know? Maybe I'm wrong, but... You're They're blind. All, Midgezilla. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 18s to, you know, right. tw- I mean, even like smaller, like 24s to it's like 16s, 14s, right. you know? So. I never want to have to fish a 24 in the lake. No, I would never. Have to. Yeah, no. That sounds like yeah. just bloop, bloop, yeah. open hooks. We'll have one after another. Yeah. 18, anyway. 18 will probably be the smallest <laughs> outfish. Right. right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it's but so to right, Tanner's right. point, he's just talking about. Yeah. That's a, it's a nice stout hook, right? Yeah. right? Uh, yeah. On the French economy, which is cool. And the jig hooks are always, you know, they're, they're super strong too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, I got, uh, anyway, I got served on the Frenchy chronomid and then like, that's now been a staple in my box. And now you have you, but you stole its confidence when you didn't right. get served. You were like, hundred oh, percent. I was right. just like, oh, and this is, this is yeah, mine this now. That's real. I cannot believe right. this. Yeah, yeah. That's a real thing. Uh, yeah. Stealing confidence is like key. It's, gr- it's, it's great when like you were the person exuding the confidence, right. Right. like, but it's good to take it. It's also hey. pretty good too. Like when your friend has confidence and you're like, Oh yeah, dude, I'm not going to fish that fly. And then you, he's like, you like, you want to go back next Tuesday? I'm like, Oh, I can't. And then you just go fish with their fish and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Check this yeah. Out, dude. And send them some pictures like, dang dude. And tell them that they weren't eating that fly. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. They're I see you're in my <laughs> same spot though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird background, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, different lake, different lake. Oh, you're at Spinny. Yeah, it was a, this was 11 mile, man. Sorry. <laughs> different North Shore. Yeah, My different bad. North Shore, dude. Looks, yeah. They look really similar, though. Same hill, same hill. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's fly number five. Anything to add, guys, to Stillwater? Generally, bigger fish, yeah? Yeah, bigger fish. Uh, some new interesting tactics to use is yeah. if you're not familiar with uh, Stillwater fishing, you're mostly a moving water guy. Yeah, and I think all yeah. this stuff applies to like bank anglers as well as right. boat anglers, right? right? Or, or float tubers, any right. of that stuff. Like Absolutely. all that, all this translates, which is super cool. So it's super accessible. Like it's a lot of shoreline. And then yep, when right. you get out on the lake, man, you bring your little radio, right. and hang out, right. maybe crush a podcast or two, maybe listen to a Five Flies while you're right. doing it. There we right. go. It's a, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, I, I would, yeah, like really look forward to us going out there and just breaking down how we're approaching it for the people as well, I think. Yeah. Cause it's going to be so different. And like Russ, like I look up to Russ, he's a really good flying. Well, you don't look up to Russ, he's much shorter. Than <laughs> right. But like I admire, you know, <laughs> you know, but it's like, I think, and it's like, but we, I like, we probably, sure, we talk a lot. Find a way. <laughs> We talk a lot where it's like we don't fish that similar of ways, you right. know. And it's like I have like if I'm going fishing with Russ, I don't have to worry about Russ doing anything. Like Russ is going to be just fine catching fish on his own, 
you know, and it's like just to have friends like that is, yeah. is fun because then you actually it's fun fishing you, like that. You really learn from people. You're like, damn, like 100%. maybe I don't think about it enough. Maybe I think about this too much. Like, yep. or maybe I like I, I right. do it all the time. Like, I get lost in like my favorite way to fish. Right. Like, right. I'm oh, like, yeah. I really want to get them like this, and right. it's like not the way that's working. Right. Obviously, when like <laughs> right. your buddy's like, oh, dude, no, <laughs> yeah, right. dude, you gotta see this. You're like, hey, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're like, what up, dude? Yeah, dude, they're, they're gonna. I'm um, getting a couple grabs. Dude. Eventually. Yeah. Get on this, yeah, but I know it. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah, there's something to be said. There's like a lot of different ways to uh, skin the uh, stillwater cat, right? right? So. Yeah, and like, uh, man, I, I I know you guys have been out with Landon. Like, I, I got to go out with Landon, and like, right. he approaches lakes completely different than I do. And like, um, it's awesome to watch right. him do his thing. Right. And like, it was the same thing. I was doing mine, and he was doing his. And it's like, uh, we were at the end of the day pretty even, but yeah. it was like we completely were, we were, different yeah. ways. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, it was cool. It was yeah, cool. Yeah. And those are the days when, like, you know, fishing's just good then. Right. That always helps. That's, that always helps. that's a gift. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Russ, for joining us again. Yes, Hopefully Russ, we'll have you, you back here soon. I'd love it. Thank you for the opportunity to come. <laughs> thank you for listening and watching. Th- thank you for having me on, Vaughn. I oh, appreciate of course. it. Hey. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> all right, appreciate we'll all you guys. guys. Later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.